All right, hello, this is AJ. Hey guys, this is Corey. Today we're going to talk about a little bit of how to use MATLAB in order to create a histogram uh, using Postgres. So first of all, we used, well this is a Mac so it's a little different than Windows. So um, to be able to connect MATLAB to Postgres, we use this website. Down at the bottom, um, like this is a Windows page, so all you really need to use is this uh, um, this connection uh, script, and you can uh, insert your own personal information on it. And when you run the script in MATLAB, it'll automatically pull from your database in Postgres SQL. All right. Now the file that we needed for the for the lottery, which are the different numbers that we use. It has all the Virginia lottery uh, numbers and all the options for the different uh, permutations. All right, so I moved all this information to this folder of MATLAB. It's right here. OK, well, these were three files that we had to download. And the lottery um, information is right there. You have to convert your Excel uh, file into a CSV file that only contains numbers in order to import the information into Postgres. OK. So now once you have it in Postgres, hmm. Mm. Oh. Sorry. Once you have it in Postgres, you um, create the database. Well, we created lots. All you have to do to create a new one is uh, click refresh. All you, all you have to do is right click, new object. And then you can create a new database. And new, data, new database. And then uh, you'll do the same thing for schema. And then down here on tables, you'll create, uh, we created a table with seven different columns in it one for uh, like the ID which is like row one row two row three and then uh, like N1 through N6 is all the different options in the Virginia lottery uh, all the different column options and so these are the numbers that it shows once every, you create the table every single possibility alright and so now the next step is to create an SQL um, code. So you click on there and it opens this up. Now we already um, set up the code. So for the N1, you run a select statement choosing column one, and then you want to count all the numbers in column one. And uh, from like your lottery two or your lottery table, and then you will want to group and order them too. And we did it in an ascending order. Um, that way you could see that like for number one, that um, it was used forty times in. Here we go. For number one, it was used forty times. And then for number two is 55 and so forth. And you can kind of see the distribution already happening. The first 15 uh, numbers are used way more than the rest. As you see, as it gets down in the 30s and 40s, they'll go down into single digits. The reason for this is because the Virginia Lottery will choose the first five options, the first five numbers, and then they will order that in... A, an ascending order. So your number one option will always be lower than your number three, number four, and number five. And it, we ran codes for uh, like the row or the column number two. And as, well. as you scroll down, you can see that the distribution increases around 12 to 18 to 20. And then when you get into the 30s and 40s, it decreases back down. Which makes it a normal curve distribution. And then the same thing happens for like uh, column three, except it's just farther back. Instead of the 
top of the bell curve happening around 15 to 20, it's going to come up around about 25, looks like 30 maybe. And then it goes on down into the 40s, into the single digits from 15 and 60. And as you look at rows, uh, columns N4 and N5 and N6, you'll see this continuization of the numbers increasing um, the probability, like how many times they're repeated. Uh, as you go towards column 5 and column 6, as I was saying before, uh, like 1 through 5, they order them in lowest value to highest value, and then number 6 is your wild card. So, as you look at it here, um, this doesn't have any sort of distribution. You can kind of tell the first 15 digits are way more uh, repeated than the rest, but it's still not as clear as the distribution as uh, rows 1 through 5. Now, we used MATLAB to create a histogram to have a better explanation, a better a visualization of these distributions. Okay, so we use the we use this uh, code to create a histogram, and so here we have different information about the Postgres, the local host number, um, the database, and what we did was create subplots for all the graphs to be able to be on um, one figure. one figure. And uh, so, as you can see here, we did one for each row, and um, and okay, I'm gonna run it. And as you can see here, um, shows it here on MATLAB. And what should show at the end is the different rows with the different histograms for each row. As you can see back in the SQL uh, query where we were writing and showing y'all the different distributions in the numbers, you can see this come true in the histograms. For row 1, 0 to about 5 is chosen way more than the 30s and 40s. And row 2, it looks like 10 to 25 is chosen more. And you can see this progression happening all the way through row 3, row 4, and row 5. And like I said again, that's because the Virginia Lottery will choose the first five numbers, and then they'll order them in a smallest value to highest value for those first five. Then they'll choose the random number for row 6. And you can kind of tell how the distribution, you'll have a greater odd for 1 through 10 versus looks like 15 through 45, 50. But since it's still a random number and it's not ordered in a certain way, there isn't a clear distribution as to uh, the rest of the rows. Um. So that's about uh, it. We just kind of wanted to show you all how to use MATLAB to create some histograms of some data in a SQL. Um, I hope this was interesting to you all. Uh, check out our next video that will be coming out later, uh, going a little bit more into detail into next steps. Yeah, and thank you very much for watching.